This is an overall Sam. He is made by appliqueing pieces of fabric to a block. Isn't he cute? This is also an overall Sam that is made by appliqueing pieces to a block. Can you see the difference in the two? This one is made by turning the edges under and then sewing it to the block. So you have turned edges. This one, the edges are not turned, but are finished with small zigzag stitches. Can you see the small zigzag stitches which finish the edge? You can also use a blanket stitch. This is the fastest, if you're a beginning quilter, this is the fastest and the easiest way to applique. If you want to make an overall Sam or a Sunbonnet Sioux, the first thing that you need is a pattern. If you ordered a pattern from me, you would get templates. You would get a template for each one of the pieces and they are labeled for the left side or for the right side, depending on which way you wanted your overall Sam to face. What do you do when you get your templates? Do you have several choices of how you're going to applique your overall Sam? The easiest way is to use something that will attach it to the fabric so it can stay there where you can sew it down. I have used a heat and bond. What I did with my templates is I traced the outline of each piece on the heat and bond. Make sure you trace them the same way, left and left. So after you have traced your pieces, you decide what colors you want the pieces to be. And here we have his little strap. You cut out around, but not on the line, the piece. And then you iron it on the wrong side of the fabric and then cut the piece out. Inside the kit you get two guides. These are to help you place them on the block in the same place so they have uniformity and they look nice. You take the piece that you have cut out, you peel off this paper that you use to draw the pattern off and on the back you will see a glue. You use the guide to help you place the piece where it belongs and then you iron it down. The instructions that you get will tell you the order. Usually it's the shoe, then the shirt, then the pants, then the strap and the arm, and then the hat. So they all fit on top of each other. And once you have them all ironed down, then all you have to do is just sew around your rough edges. And on this one I used a simple, you see, simple zigzag around the outside. And you use the color of the piece that you are sewing down. You will change colors as you sew down the different pieces. Choice number two, you don't like raw edges, you'd rather have your edges turned under, all the way under and then sew it down. This one is sewn down with hopefully a blind stitch, mine's not as blind as some people's, but it's supposed to be a hidden stitch that is just catches the edge as you sew around, or you can machine stitch around these, but the edge is turned. This is what you do to do turned edges. You can take, again, your template pattern that you are going to use to make him, and you can do one of two things. My mother used to take her piece of cloth like this, and she would put her template that she made out of milk cartons, because of course milk cartons were very sturdy and wonderful. And she would take a pencil now we're on the right side of the fabric, which is hard to tell in this, but she would draw around her piece like this using her template. And you can buy the templates and you can trace around them on the fabric of your choice. Now there you have the outline. You need to turn this to the inside. So the next thing that you would do would be to take some scissors and trim around your outline one fourth of an inch away from the line. I have taken and I've trimmed one fourth of an inch around the pattern that I have drawn on the cloth. The next thing to do is to clip. And you want to clip your edges because as you turn it, you want it to have some give. Now you don't want to cut the line, that would be bad. 
but you do want to cut up close to it. And there are a couple of things that you need to know. Warning, red light, be careful. When you get to a corner like this one right here, where you're going into the corner, be real careful you don't get too close because you don't want that to fray and split open on you. So we're going to clip around this. Got my edges off my corners because they're hard to turn unless you do. I'm even going to clip this piece that is not too badly curved just so there's a little play. So I'm clipping around my edges. Then mother used to, see where the line is? You can finger press or you can turn it with an iron and press it down, but you're going to turn it on that line. And then she would take a needle and thread this is what she did. She turned the piece under on the line and she had a needle and thread and she would do the knot on the top and she would just go down and up and down and up and baste that edge down that she turned under. There's her quarter inch turn under. And of course where you're covered, like these shoes are covered with the pants, she would leave that unbasted. That didn't need to be basted. If you do that, once again, you can use your guide. Mother didn't have a guide. She used to just draw the outline on the block. And you would put your pieces down, again, in the same order. The shoes are done. You would applique around the shoe. Then you would put on the shirt, and you would applique around the shirt. The pants, and applique around the pants. The hand, the sleeve, the strap, and the hat. And you would sew them down one at a time. The guide that I've given you is a guide a placement for the arm and the strap so they are in the same place. The second way to turn your edges under for an applique is a little easier way than mother used to do where you drew it and then you force the edges around on the line. You take, this is interfacing. The interfacing that I am using is not fusible. It is the sewable interfacing. It has no glue. So when you press it, you don't have to worry about sticking to your ironing board or sticking to anything else. If you do your laundry and you use dryer sheets, these are great for this applique. And usually most of your applique pieces are small enough that you can get them on a dryer sheet. You can draw them and use them on a... These are sturdy and they don't rip. They have better turnability, so to speak. You have to be careful with the interfacing because if you pull on it too hard, you can get a tear in your interfacing as you're turning it. So be careful with your interfacing as you turn it. Trace your pattern on the interfacing. Then draw a line one quarter of an inch outside of the pattern piece you've drawn. Take your interfacing and pin it onto the fabric of your choice. This is going to be my hat. After it's pinned, you're going to sew on the inside line, the line that you traced, with small stitches all the way around because this is a contained piece. And when you get, when you're sewing these and you get to a corner, instead of just pivoting and making it sharp, if you'll take two stitches, one, two, on your turn, you'll get a much better corner. Once you've sewn all the way around your hat, on the inside line we're going to trim. You need to cut on that quarter inch line that you drew on the outside and trim all the way around your hat. Now that you've trimmed all the way around on your quarter inch line you're going to do what my mother did. Remember when I showed you this one? She traced and she was going to turn on the edge. She went around and she clipped all the way around. That's what you're going to do and you're going to clip your corners off. So we're going to clip all the way around and we're going to clip into these. Make sure you do not cut too close to your sewed line. You want to clip but not too close to your line. I'm clipping my edge all the way around. Just little tiny cuts that will open it up as I turn it. The corners right here, you want to trim off your corners so you won't have that bulk when you turn it. 
you're going to pull the interfacing away from your fabric. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a little snip and then insert your scissor and make a cut, but not too close to either side. You're going to make a little opening here. Looks kind of like a, a circle. This we're going to reach in here and we're going to turn the fabric to the outside. Just kind of stick your finger in there and get hold of that fabric and pull it through. Just pull it through to the other side. This is a little screwdriver. I'm sure there are a lot better tools to work your edges up. Get down in your corners and get your corners out. Pin. Pull your pin. Ed, pull your edge out with your pin. Gently work it out to the edge. If you need to, you can take a pin and do some pulling out. And then you want to press it. It turns your quarter edge all the way around. And there you see there's my opening that I cut. Right there on the back. This can stay. You can sew the interfacing in. You don't need to remove the interfacing. It will just stay there. And then you press. I usually push down as I press and get that interfacing to go totally behind because you don't want to see it. And then you will put this on your pattern. You need to sew with small stitches. Small stitches because you, it'll help one for your curves to be better because they'll be close together. It'll be easier to make your curves. And two, it helps it from not tearing. When you cut it open, you do not want to cut near the edges. You want to stay in the middle to turn it just in case there's a little bit of rip or tear in your interfacing. You don't want it to rip or tear to your edge. On these corners where you clip, we're clipping corners. I said be careful when you go in and clip your corners on your tur cur on your curves. This one was good. I did not go in too far. This one was bad. I went in too far. And if I don't know if you can see that, but what I've done is I have nicked the sew line. And that is uh, not what you want to do because then it frays. And what you have is a rough showing, which is bad. Use a low heat iron on this interfacing. It's tender stuff. You don't want to do anything too bad. Roll it to the inside. Roll it with your fingers to the inside. You could press it on the outside and just roll it underneath so you don't see any of that interfacing. This is a faster, easier way to turn your edges under than it is, although you can do it the way my mother did it. And just draw your picture and just 